Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of my cutting garden and my vegetable garden. So welcome everyone to my YouTube channel, 90% Native. My name is Michelle and this is my cutting garden. So I am going to start here with the left hand side bed. This is a four by eight bed. And first up we have these beautiful Peruvian zinnias that I got from Baker Creek. They're tiny and they're gorgeous. So this front bed here is gonna have small, or the front of this front bed is going to have small, hot colored, warm colored zinnias. And just something, I have a lot of this um, partridge pea, which is a, like a bumblebee magnet. And I have it growing in my path, so I brought a bunch of it out of the path and put it in this bed and then in my yellow bed, because the blooms are yellow. Then I have the Cosmos Bright Lights interspersed throughout here. These are about to start blooming. I have the, some of the bigger zinnias here. Um, no blooms just yet, but there's also calendula in here and um, dahlias. There's one back there. It's going to be purple. Um, I think I have a couple more that are just popping up that overwintered. Next up on the trellis, this is my Akuka melon vines, and I have wound up or laced up uh, jute twine so that they could climb up. I noticed at the beginning they weren't climbing up so well on just like the, the really slippery um, arch trellis metal. So that actually has done a lot of good. And then next up here I have, I believe these are scarlet runner beans. Um, I did not label them thinking that I would remember and <laughs> I never remember. So there you go. Those are getting a nice start. And then behind that, we have a ton of poppies. Oh, one's blooming. Oh my goodness. You even notice that there's one. So these should all be purple, blue, and gray poppies with Rosetta Cosmos and white afternoon cosmos. There are also dahlias in here. There are purple and white dahlias in here. Let me see if I can find, they're down here, not getting a lot of sun. I might not do the poppies next year because of that. But anyway, uh, as soon as the poppies go over, I'm gonna cut the foliage all the way back just to get the sun onto the Oh, this is so pretty. On to the dahlias. I got another one over on the other side. Okay, coming around here. Oh, I forgot. On this arch trellis, I have Kajari melons that are also needing more of the sun. I don't have them kind of tied up here yet because as soon as the poppy blooms go over, then I am cutting them all the way back down to the ground so I can get the sun on some of these heat loving plants. Here's a dahlia right here. Here are more beans. And these are rattlesnake purple pole beans. So I actually did label this one right here. And on the other side, I have my remaining, my last remaining tomatoes that uh, didn't go necessarily in my garden or that I gave away. So those are gonna go on the deck. And then here's looking at this bed from the back side. Here's the bone set, the common bone set that I Chelsea chopped in my last video, if you happened to watch. And then I just have calendula and alyssum. Um, this is New England aster right here. That's left over from a previous Chelsea chop experiment. And then you can see I have all of the cosmos right here. And then there is another purple poppy. So with the Cosmos and the Zinnias this year, I am going to cut them hard every time I take a bloom off because they get so leggy in my garden and I think it's just because I am not doing a severe chop as I need to. 
Okay, this is coming around the side. Oh, and you'll see these Cosmos over here. So the whole point of this bed and the staking was that the dahlias would come up and the dahlias would support the Cosmos, which actually the poppies are supporting the Cosmos. But I'm thinking that next time I need to make sure that those Cosmos are really, really in the interior, not on the edge at all. And also this, I think I talked about the way I was staking this time, uh, the couple different methods that I was using. So this where I'm just staking the one dahlia and hoping that that supports everything else, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is probably later tonight, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna put a bamboo stake that matches this one over here and go down and do four of those and um, string up um, twine. I'll show you where they did that on another bed so that um, I can get some really good staking going on here. Right here is some holy basil and I put a lot of basil around, a lot of um, just good smelling plants so that I can keep the pests at bay. Oh, we got another poppy. Look at that beautiful poppy. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to have to keep the poppies next year. Maybe I just won't do the red ones. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, coming over to my right side bed, I have what appears to be a bunch of poppies about to bloom. Oh, the, that looks like that has a problem. What do you think? I don't know. So these poppies are supposed to be um, called Pink Supreme. So I have the Pink Supreme in there. I have some nasturtiums blooming in there. So this is pretty much just now getting ready for the poppy explosion. Here's one about to bloom. Here are some more nasturtiums. And then the zinnias are still working their way up. So same with the other bed. In this bed, I will cut all the foliage back as soon as the poppies are not no longer blooming or the blooms are going over because I want the zinnias to get all of the sun. Okay. So then on this side, just like the other side opposite, this, this is the kooka melon vines. They're not doing as well as the other side. I don't think they're getting as much sun. Maybe I need to help them out a little bit with this twine. But anyway, those, there they are. And here are what I believe are scarlet runner beans. Here are the Kajari melons. And then there are some more beans here, which are the rattlesnake beans. Oh, something's already eaten it. Anyway, when the poppies are done, these guys will get much more sun. I cannot believe how beautiful these poppies are. Wow. I didn't know I had white though. So in here I also have the Cosmos and I have Dahlias in here as well. So the Cosmos are just getting started. The poppies are just getting started. Um, so yeah, this is the left side or the right side bed. Okay. Now coming over here to the red bed. It looks a bit of a mess right now. Um, I have these red poppies blooming, but I don't think I want to do those poppies again next year because they grow in such a mess. It's just not tidy like the other really big poppies. So these ones might not be for next year. We'll see. This one, let's see. I'll just have to figure it out. But behind it there, we have the deep, deep red um, gladiolas, red snapdragons, turtle heads, things that aren't blooming yet. And then in the front here, I have the French uh, marigolds metamorphosis, or metamorph, metamorph. And so anyway, depending on the heat, will determine how the colors of their bloom. So here, I planted these, um, when it was cooler out and I planted these when it was hotter out. So the hotter it gets, the, the more variation in the bloom colors. Yeah, so this bed, work in progress. I have dahlias in here that don't seem to be coming up. I don't know. This red bed is always difficult for me. Okay, in the orange bed, in front of the orange bed I have two alyssum and then in here I have dahlias and then I have this um, 
lemon and tangerine. The lemons are in the yellow bed, but and this is a tangerine. Oh, marigold, and they smell so good. It smells like lemon. Doesn't smell like your typical marigold. And then I have these. These are going to be like peachy, orangey dahlias in there. And then here's some classic zinnias. These are smaller zinnias again, and then um, yellow, orange, and white. And then the nasturtiums. Behind that, I have the snapdragons. The alliums have gone over, if you can see that. And then down there in the, in the ground, hopefully you can see the nasturtiums are blooming. I just really want the nasturtiums everywhere. Oh, what did I got here? That is a butterscotch nasturtium. I really love that. Look how pretty that is. Those three things, the foliage of the poppy, the uh, foliage and the blooms of the coriander, and then the big yellow a butterscotch nasturtium. That's so pretty, so pretty. I've been pulling these out as they've been turning yellow, hoping that I gave the tulips enough time to gain some strength for next year because I really don't want to do tulips every fall. It's so, ugh, it's so hard, but then I really love them. Okay, and then here is the yellow bed, and we have the lemon marigolds. It smells so good. Lots of this fennel, this beautiful airy fennel, and then butterscotch nasturtiums. Looking so good, and then the core, the cilantro that is seeding, and I will collect the seeds. Some more of the butterscotch nasturtium. And then here is an early bird bloom for the Rudbeckia triloba. This shouldn't be blooming for a long time, I don't think. But there it is, and I have it all nice and staked up. I'll probably put another row of twine around there because it is large and in charge. The only thing that needs to go in here are the giant yellow marigolds, and that's the same with the orange bed, too. I need the giant orange marigolds in here the problem is is I think I know the difference between the two um, but I didn't label every single one I labeled like a row I was hoping to get a bloom so I could just verify but we'll see so now I'm going to take you around the back here is my purple broccoli which I put in a radish salad it was so good it was radish I should have done a video on it actually it was this um, purple broccoli, radishes, my radishes that I grew, tomatoes, cucumbers, feta cheese, um, onion, or no, not onion, feta cheese, lemon juice, and mayonnaise. It was delicious. Here is the, the snowball cabbage, which the leaves are getting eaten up by the bugs, which, I mean, if I get my little or not cabbage, I'm sorry, cauliflower. But if I get my little cauliflowers, I'm not really caring about the leaves, right? I don't know. Here is I, where I cleaned out the, I can't remember, something. I cleaned out something from here. I didn't eat it, but I let it go to flower because it went straight to flower and it was really pretty. Anyway, so I put in here some acorn squash. And then here is my dino kale and my red Russian kale. And I'm going to use those. I have a recipe that I'm going to use those in that a chef friend gave me. So that'll be fun. And then my wild garlic. Okay, let me try and get back here without falling. Here is, what is this? Giant hyssop? No, Hori Mountain Mint. Hori Mountain Mint. This is orange cone flower. This is giant hyssop. And then on this side, I have Virgin's Bower, Golden Alexander's. Over here, I have Anise Hyssop. Here is some disappointing fire pinks with no blooms. A nasturtium. And here's Coreopsis with lots of germination. Here's more fire pink with no germination, but I will let these sit for another year just in case. And then this is Slender Mountain Mint. 
So over here are my gourds. These uh, grow the, the bird box gourds. Oh, here's some Penstemon digitalis. How beautiful. Okay. Sweet peas. These will be coming out soon and can't remember what I'm putting in here. Okay, here are the Jerusalem artichokes and they have the runner beans that are wrapping around them. So there's, I think, six of them. So I did scarlet runner bean and Kentucky pole bean in here. Alpine strawberries, little teeny guys. I'm gonna do a couple um, of these next year that are the native. Here are all of my tomatoes. I am getting some blooms here. And first we have Mortgage Lifter, Paul Robeson, Dr. Witchy. Trying to keep these suckers at bay. The suckers are these things that grow out of what people refer to as the armpit. See, it's like kind of like almost a 90 degree angle. You take this one that's at the 45, that's the sucker, and you take that out. And there's one. Oh, there's a big one. How did I miss that one? Okay, gotta get rid of that one. That's gone. And then I like to take anything that's kind of close to the, the ground out. Okay, one's good. Okay, this one is black strawberry. I just went through here and got these suckers out, man. Okay, this one needs tied up again. See that sucker? I don't know how I missed those. Okay. This one is blueberries. This one right here with blooms is sun gold with a cucumber trying to come over here. He can stay, he can stay on his side of the fence. Okay, then we have, it's a sky. Then we have Barry's Crazy Cherries. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one's the leader and which one's the sucker. I think that's the sucker. And then finally, last but not least, we have Super Sweet 100. I think these were my favorite one year, so I got them again. I didn't have them last year. So there we go. Those are all the tomatoes. Sorry you had to come with me <laughs> while I pinched out the suckers. Here is the corner bed and my borage is blooming. And then I've, oh, I think I've decided which dill I like the best. I think it's Leafy Diana. I've been using all the Leafy Diana. But anyway, we have the, um, I think it's a sweet Indian Thai basil here and holy basil. Here are bush beans. So this is the royalty purple pod. And then my, what are these? My honey nut squash. They weren't looking so good yesterday. I think, from the research that I did, that I think they were, it was just getting way, way, way too hot so early and they weren't used to it, so I put a shade cloth over them. Here are contender bush beans. Over here I have tricolor bush beans. And then here are the Jack B. Little pumpkins that I covered because of the heat. And then finally here are the red swan bush beans, which I'm really excited about. Then my triangle bed here with the borage that's blooming. I've never had borage get so big. And oh, I hope I have some flowers. Here is purple hyacinth bean flowers. Aren't they so pretty? They are not edible. They're toxic. Don't eat them. Okay, and then I have my row of dahlias with lots of 
um, basil in between to keep the white fly off. I'm going to be checking these a lot because last year when I went on vacation, I got white flies. I wasn't happy about it. So nothing blooming just yet, but it looks like they're about to start. Just going to shake them up a little bit, make sure I don't see any what appear to be white flies coming off. I don't. Oh, these are about to bloom. Oh, this is groovy. This one is really cool. Okay. Looking good so far. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here tonight or tomorrow, and I'm probably going to put a stake in the front of each one. And then what is that? Are you a good or a bad? I don't know. Anyway. And then I will just put some twine from the stake and then kind of loop it around in the fence. Try and keep them tied up that way. So there are all the dahlias. Okay, now I'm going to take you out of the cutting garden and we're going to go to the hummingbird bed. Well, actually, first I'll show you the front. Oh, it's too bad I didn't... I don't think I did a tour when the bearded irises were in bloom. It's too bad. But anyway, my Hypericum prolificum are looking really nice and green and healthy. And then on each corner there are bearded iris and uh, anise hyssop. Here we have my whiskey barrel pond. And this little blue flag iris was blooming yesterday, not anymore. Um, yeah, so that's that. The peonies were absolutely gorgeous. They are no longer blooming. I usually only get them for a couple days because we get spring storms like right exactly when they're blooming. So kind of takes them out. Okay, so this is the hummingbird bed. And I actually put a lot, well, not a lot, but some more things in here that I'm really excited about. So First, I'll, I'll show you what's blooming and what's new. So this is new. This is Glara. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it likes sandy soil. And it also said it likes well-drained clay soil. I think I've gotten this area well-drained. I may put these in the ground maybe next year, but I didn't want to take a chance this year. So here are, here's Glara. I have three pots. This one, that one, that one down there. And then the downy wood mint is blooming and the pollinators are loving it. I put some zinnias back there, which is new for me for this garden because usually it's all uh, native or pollinator friendly. And then I am going to put, I, for, I almost forgot I had all these butterfly, this butterfly weed um, that I grew from seed two years ago. And so I'm going to plop those in between the downy wood mint. And I thought if by chance they start blooming together the purple and the orange would look really nice other than that there's rudbeckias back there and lots of salvias lamb's ear here is the other gara gora gara so pretty downy wood mint and then the butterfly weed back there oh i also put rose milkweed i put three little sections of rose milkweed. That's what I started doing in this bed is planting, getting enough plants to do one type of plant three times in this bed. So to go for like a repetitive design in here. So we'll see how it works. The blue labelia self seed themselves everywhere. So, you know, um, okay. Here is the Origeron Philadelphia. Delphius. Anyway, I've absolutely adored these and the little teeny pollinators have too. And I really wanted to make like um, a little YouTube short with them and the little, oh, there's a little teeny pollinator waiting for me to move. Can you see it in there? He's just like hovering, He's like get out of there. Okay. Anyway, I hope these self seed everywhere and my bearded irises have gone over. These ones were a gift here from a friend from their garden and I have truly enjoyed them so so much uh let's see what else oh here is 
Maryland aster. Now this is another plant that likes sandy soils like the gara. However, they like more of a sandy wet soil. So you may notice that I put wood chips as a mulch on this one, whereas I put pebbles as a mulch on that one. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, here's more of the downy wood mint, so cute. Oh, the other thing I did, I think I talked about this before, is I put in prairie drop seed that I started, not this past fall, but the fall before. And then what I'll do is, as that grows, I'll take out these Carex amphibolas, which don't like the middle of the summer heat. And so they don't look good here in the middle of summer, but the prairie drop seed will. And then I'll take the Carex amphibola and I'll just pop it around in the woodland. Okay, here is the back of the cutting garden, kind of the back. So let's start here. Here's more downy wood mint. Pollinators love it. Back there I have short tooth mountain mint. Here are the gorgeous, gorgeous leaves of the native Virginia strawberry. I put some rosemary in here, which I'm not sure if it's going to get enough sun. Um, just as a scent deterrent, just like I have the short tooth mountain mint here, um, right in front of these uh, gray or silky dogwoods. I can't remember which one they are. And the deer stayed off of them this year and they're looking really, really good. So I have another rosemary there. Just not sure if that's enough sun. I mean, this area does get afternoon sun, but. So the yellow wild indigos are going over. I wish I would have taken more photos. But this whole area had those beautiful, really cool, different looking yellow blooms. And then if I go, there's a little path here. This beautiful plant, which I've never had, I've never been able to get it this big, is the American Spike Nard. And the deer absolutely love it. And I really just want to plant it everywhere so that there's just so much of it that the deer can't eat it all. But it should have a like, tons of red berries that the birds love in the fall and i know this because i gave one to my friend and her deer don't eat the spike nard where my deer do just crazy so anyway that's the spike nard first year it's gotten that big and then back here i have penstemone and then we have virginia creeper i just pulled out a bunch of oriental bittersweet and i have a tall thimble weed here And then back here I have uh, winter berries, which if I would have been paying attention when I planted these winter berries, I wouldn't have planted them here because they like really, really wet, but they've survived. There's a male in there. The three on the outside are female. Um, but what I did last year is I put a ton of this Acarix Pennsylvanica all through here. And I'm hoping with that, that it will cover the soil, cool the soil, and keep the soil more moist, which is, you know, the environment that the winter berry like. So now let me take you over to my quote unquote deer resistant veg patch. Okay, I'm so excited about those poppies. Okay, so here we go. I still gotta get mulch over there. Here's my row of basils. You know what, they don't look like fantastic. The one that looks great is this aromatic OG. I've chopped the back a couple of times. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what I'm like not doing wrong, but they don't look like big and beautiful and whatever. Anyway, but this oregano does. And once it starts blooming, the pollinators, pollinators will love it. Here is some dill bouquet. Now see, this is what my dill looks like every year, okay, until I started growing that leafy Diane. Here's some more basil and parsley, right? No, <laughs> not parsley. Cilantro that looks like parsley. Hold on. Yeah, that's cilantro. Okay. Cilantro marjoram, oregano, thyme. And then here I have my, I think these are the salt and pepper cucumbers. 
with the lemon and tangerine marigolds and then I put a little um, marjoram or oregano in there. So what I think I'm gonna do um, with my tomatoes that um, I'm gonna put on my deck is I'm not, I think I'm actually gonna take the partridge pea that I showed you earlier and put in there as a companion plant because tomatoes are pollinated with buzz pollination so things release by the vibration of the bumblebees and so um, what I want to do is put some of those little partridge peas in with the tomatoes and see what happens okay now here's the leafy Diane see this is the dill I'm gonna grow this every year actually I, I might seed some more of it today this is the silver slicer cucumber so I'm, I plan to use the silver slicer as like a for the salads and then over here the salt and pepper I want to do pickles um, I've done, been doing a lot of research on fermenting and all that kind of good stuff and hopefully maybe I can do that with you guys and then over here we have just more herbs so we have marjoram oregano um, here is some German chamomile here's borage and then here are two bush cucumbers intermixed with nasturtiums and the marigolds here are my what are these called oh my goodness artichokes artichokes they have aphids and because they have aphids the ants have come to farm the aphids now i sprinkled cinnamon on there they went away for a day i've been shooting them off with um the hose that isn't like really worked tremendously but I haven't been consistent with it so what I think I'm gonna do is take some of these leaves here off down here I'm gonna spray it get a little bit better with spraying I'll come do that after I do this video spray it with water and then um, I'm gonna keep you know crossing my fingers for the ladybugs to come you know maybe they'll get here soon I, there was a ladybug on one of these the other day. So I'm like, hon, where'd you go? Anyway. Okay, over here, that is a yucca. Um, a friend, a gardening friend um, was giving away yuccas and I got three plants. And then that one was almost like a little carry-on neighbor. That one was just kind of like a separate shoot. And so I'll put that there. I've been thinking, so I want to line this for deer resistance, right? So I'm thinking maybe I do artichokes and I want to do something in the ground. Now I've clay soil, so I'm not sure about the artichokes, but anyway, I want to do like maybe artichokes, yuccas and the um, shallow sedge here as more of like a mini hedge. Anyway, we'll see how that comes along. I just thinking about that the other day. Okay. And here are my sunny. Oh, here's some Jack in the pulpit that I seeded. I don't think I seeded these guys with you, but I have um, a 10 by 10 flat that I did seed with you guys. It's down in the shady garden. What are you? Hmm. Okay. So here are my sunny natives in the back. I have short tooth mountain mint, Virginia mountain mint. Um, what are you? Oh, aromatic aster, sneezeweed, smooth blue aster, Purple cone flowers, virgin's bower. I think those are the purple headed sneezeweed, Hypericum prolificums. I have the Rebecca triloba and or Indian summer and the Rebecca triloba. I got to put out. What is this? I got to go get this in water. There's a rattlesnake master there. There's some um, big blue stem, Cydos gamma, little blue stem. All sorts of good stuff in there okay and then over here in this hot mess so this is going to the compost there's my here's my rutabaga and my carrots <clears throat> looking okay now they're getting their leaves eaten up but if anybody knows I mean that doesn't matter because I'm not gonna eat the leaves I'm gonna eat the rutabagas so we'll see what happens here so I cut back this non-native azalea, two of them right there, because first off, they were too big and I thought I could get more sun into my cutting garden. Second off, oh, look at that big demon one. Um, there is, I think, honeysuckle growing. And so I put a little bit of vine killer on here, just on, I just painted it on. So 
So I'm hoping to get rid of it because it gets caught up in here every year and I want to get rid of it for good. And then I cut back. That uh, non-native azalea. Here's some more Penstemone digitalis. And I planted a lot of Virginia strawberry back here. I forget what that is. So here is the winter berry close up. So this is from the other side. So female, 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 and then there's the male about to bloom. I'm really hoping that that's a southern gentleman and I didn't forget and accidentally put a dwarf one in there because I do have dwarf ones. Anyway, I have orange clone flower there and up there I think I have something called quinine and then I have a thistle. You know what? I'm going to take you around to see the thistle. So pollinators love, I need to get rid of this. This is a hot mess. <sighs> okay. So anyway, I love the way thistles look and my husband just used to love, love, love the movie Braveheart. So we call it the Brave Thistles, the Braveheart flower. And I always wanted to get thistles in the garden for him. And I did, and I got, I think it was a prairie thistle, put that in the garden. It grew like bigger than the, I had it in this garden down here, the island garden. It grew bigger than the, the flipping red bud. Okay, so that wasn't gonna work. And it fell over in a storm before it even bloomed. But anyway, this one is supposed to only get three feet tall max. You can see it down in there. And then the nursery that I get it from, or Sangha, they ran out and they don't have any now. And I wanted to get more for back there along the fence because it's not going to poke anyone back there. Anyway, that's the cutting garden, vegetable garden, hummingbird garden. Let's just go back in for one more look at this beautiful poppy. Oh my word. So gorgeous. Hmm. Here's the white one. Wow. So pretty. Okay, folks. Well, thank you for joining me today, especially if you lasted through this whole video. And if you like the content then please consider subscribing and liking and pressing the bell button and sharing with your friends and all that kind of good stuff and i will see you again next time thank you